So I'm sure you've heard the saying, you only get one chance to make a first impression. And I think we can agree, you know, for the most part, I mean, not for the most part, it's just a true thing because the first impression is the first impression and there's only one chance to do it. But we live in a world where people will come to certain conclusions about you and you to others just based off what they see, based off their first engagement with you, right? And we may not always be aware of how we come across to others. We not, may not always be aware of the things that others will notice first in us. And specifically as a woman, what a man will notice first in you, all right? And now some of you might say, well, I don't care. <laughs> I don't give a damn what these men notice first. Okay, I get it. I understand, okay? But listen, I think if, if you desire a relationship in any way, and even if right now you may not be in the mindset of, I want one at the moment, there's a very good chance you will at some point. And I think it's good for you to be aware of what things are going to play into that first impression. What is noticed initially from a man and, and how that can either help or hurt you in the process of dating. But also these things can have an impact in other aspects of your life. So let's get to it. So one of the things that men will notice first in a woman is your smile or lack of one. All right. Now, I know some of y'all sucked your teeth <laughs> and, and rolled your eyes because I know many of you have experienced the whole having a man telling you to smile or why don't you smile? And you're like, what the hell is your problem? What, what makes you think you can tell me to smile? Like, I get it. it. It can be annoying for many of you, right? So it may be annoying to have me bring this up. But, you know, I love y'all. And I got to be real with y'all. Smiling matters, okay? Sm There's a study that shows women are found more attractive when they smile. Smiling is inviting. Smiling makes you... Uh, more approachable, it makes you seem more friendly, all these wonderful things, and therefore it can create more opportunities for you or have people receive you in a more positive light, right? Now, I know some of you have what some call resting bee face. I'm not going to use the whole word, but most of y'all know what I'm talking about, resting bee face, right? And I always say on the tour, I always joke around and say, listen, if you're using your resting bee face or what I like to say, your mean mug, right? Your, your scowled up, frowned up face because you don't want to be dealing with these men. You don't want anyone to touch you, approach, not touch you, approach you, well, touch you too, but you don't want any of that attention, right? Then cool. I get it. I understand. But you can't be doing that and then say to me, why aren't men approaching me? Why aren't I meeting any good men? Why is dating so hard? Because you look difficult. <laughs> That's why. Like, it, you walking around looking unhappy, you look difficult. Or you look like you don't want to be bothered, right? And so why would a man, and, and more specifically, a man who is seriously interested in a real potential relationship, why would he want to approach you? See, the guys who just want to have fun with you, who just want to sleep with you, they don't care. They don't care how you're walking around, how you're looking, what kind of energy you're giving off, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later, because all they see is what is physically appealing to them, right? Or what they view as a target for whatever reason, and they want to go after it, all right? And they're not deterred by your lack of a smile. Not to mention, the, the good, nice guy who's genuine about a relationship sees your lack of a smile, sees maybe you are in a mood or you're giving off a mood that says, I don't want to be bothered. And out of respect, he's not going to approach you. He's like, all right, let me just leave her alone. Whereas the guy who, again, doesn't care because it's all about what he's looking for, will just talk to you anyway, will invade your privacy, will not even consider that you may not be in a place to want to entertain conversation. But the bottom line is, smiling is good. Now, I know many women will say to me, I just don't smile, Stefan. It just is, I'm not even trying to look this way. It's just how it is. I'm not even realizing it. I get it. I understand. But I always say, 
Smiling is easy when you're at peace from within. So if you struggle to smile, what are you stressing about? What haven't you let go? What are you holding on to? What are you overthinking and overanalyzing? Because chances are, that's why you don't smile as much naturally. When you are happier, when you are more at peace, it will just come out of you. It will radiate from you, okay? And you won't struggle with this anymore. So to me, don't just be comfortable with the whole, I just don't smile, go deeper. Why? Why am I not smiling? Why am I not coming across that way, okay? And again, understand that this is, even though we're talking about the things that men know this first, all these things I'm going to mention are going to be good for you. Because understand when you smile, like I'll give an example real quick for myself. Because even me as a man, though there are studies that say men are found more attractive when we're not smiling like that. But I can say like there's times where I'll come out the gym and people have seen me in the street and say, you look mean. <laughs> and they were afraid to approach me. And I'm like, yo, I'm super friendly. I'll talk to it. I'll give anyone my time if they come to me in the street. But I get it. I'm walking out, I'm tense from the workout, and I haven't relaxed myself. I haven't relaxed my muscles, my mind, and that, that gives off a certain aura. And so when you're not smiling, again, or when you do smile, it's not just about how people receive you, but it's also about how you're feeling, how it allows you to relax. It brings you peace by putting a smile on your face. And maybe it's looking at things that will help you smile. Like I'm a big believer in I don't watch stressful uh, drama and nonsense on TV. When I do watch TV, which is very rare, it's comedy. It's only thing that's gonna make me laugh and smile. And I always notice because you give off certain, I believe, hormones. I might be saying it wrong, but there's some kind of chemical reaction from smiling and laughing that just makes you feel good. So it's gonna be good for you, but it definitely plays into one of the things that men will know, notice first about you. All right, so. Another thing that men will notice first on you or about you is how you are dressed. Now, this can be a sensitive topic because people see this differently depending on who they are. And I'm not here to tell you how you should be dressing, okay? If anything, the way you should be dressing is what makes you happy, what makes you comfortable, what's going to allow you to feel good, that's what I really want for you, right? But let's be real. People are going to maybe draw certain conclusions or perceive you a certain kind of way based on how you're dressed. And I think it's good to just be aware and understand that. And I don't think we need to be mad if people want to jump to certain conclusions because of how we're dressed. And this is why it can get become a sensitive topic because let's be real, there are some men out there who can be very judgmental, right? And if you're wearing, and not just men, other women, but if you're wearing provocative clothing, right? Some people are gonna jump to certain conclusions, okay? They're gonna perceive you a certain kind of way and that might dictate if they do approach you, how they will approach you, okay? Um, on the other hand, dressing maybe super conservative can then give off the perception of, well, that you're this very conservative woman and that might not work for some other guys. And that's why I don't want you focus so much on how they will perceive it. I want you first to focus on what you feel good in and understand that everyone's not going to agree with it. Because I'm going to tell you on the flip side, like, and I'm just being honest here, and some of y'all may judge me for it, but I don't mind the provocative clothes. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying that like I'm just trying to get every woman to walk around half naked. What I'm saying is like even in my own, if I'm in a relationship, I'm not one of those guys that's like my woman has to dress super conservative because you're with me now. That's just not how I am. I don't know why, but I'm just not like that. I don't mind. I don't mind a little sexiness. You know what I'm saying? A little, a little extra sexy. Now, of course, there's a line. Don't get me wrong. There is a line. But my line might be a little more further out than some other people, okay? And so I think it's important for you as a woman is like, and of course, in life, we're going to have different places that we're dressed different ways, right? And that's why, again, it's all about just doing what feels good to you, doing what you like, because you want a guy who's 
again, accepting of that, whatever it is, whether it's, okay, he accepts your conservative dressing ways or he accepts your, your sexy dressing ways, whatever it is, he's good and you guys are on the same page about it. But understand that, again, when we're in certain environments, how we're dressed is going to be, uh, is going to contribute to how people view us, uh, how people approach us, all these different things. So I don't want you to dwell on it too much, but it is something I had to mention because it is, in fact, one of those things that men will notice first about you. All right. So here's another thing men will notice first about you or first on the woman. And that is your energy or your spirit that you're giving off. Now, we talked about this in the beginning of this video, but you know, there's a quote that says, your energy introduces you before you even speak. And I think a lot of people underestimate how, that, how impactful their energy, their spirit is in how people receive or perceive you and how that affects a lot of scenarios and situations for individuals. Because just to help give it more context and, and give more understanding to it, think about even in a moment where have you ever spoke to someone and they're speaking to you very calm, they're being very proper, but you can still feel the stankness coming off their body. You can still feel this attitude, this passive aggressiveness. So you still want to reach over and knock them out one good time because even though their words are not saying anything bad, their energy or their spirit is attacking you, all right? And it can cause you to get defensive. Well, the reality is that many times you may have done the same thing where you think, I'm being cool, I'm being calm, but in reality, your energy, your spirit is saying something completely different, okay? And I've, this is him, my spirit, I got to say it. This is what creates also a huge disconnect for some women in regards to the reality of being feminine versus being perceived as feminine, all right? What I mean by that is this. I'll have a lot of women say to me, Stefan, I am feminine in a relationship. I'm very this, I'm very that, I do all these things, I'm sweet, I'm loving, great, right? But can't seem to meet masculine men, only seem to meet men who are trying to leech off them, who good for nothing, you know, doesn't honor them in that way, doesn't, uh, doesn't make them feel comfortable resting in their feminine energy, so to speak, right? And what I have to explain to them is, yes, you may be feminine at your core and you know how to be feminine in a relationship, but your energy and spirit does not give off femininity. And because of that, the masculine man, the man who could honor that side of you, who can, uh, who can pour into that, won't even approach you. So essentially, if I'm passing by you in the street or if I'm working with you at the office or whatever the case may be, and you come off very hardened, masculine, negative, whatever, I'm not going to know you have this feminine side of you that you know how to tap into. You see what I'm saying? And not only will I not know, because some of you might say, well, if they would get to know me, well, here's what I always say to women. That's like a man saying... Uh, he, that's like a man walking around looking broke, looking homeless, and saying, well, if women just got to know me, they would know I have some money. <laughs> and it's like, no, you can't do that. You have to present yourself as such if you expect them to understand that you possess such a quality, right? Because nobody got time to be sitting and trying to discover every person because no one's guaranteed what they're going to find if they try to push through that. So if you're giving off masculine or if you're giving off negative or whatever, well, most people are just going to assume that's just who you are. And the reality is that you do the same with other people. Because we, again, we don't have time to sit down with every individual that catches our eye if what they're giving us in energy and spirit is not what we like. Plain and simple. So it's important to get that into alignment of, okay, if this is who you are, how do we start to exude that? How do we start to tap into that in everyday life so people can see that in you, see that you possess that quality? And 
lo and behold, smiling is one of those ways. <laughs> like just the smiling helps. That smiling will help you exude more of that feminine energy. But also, it's not just being feminine, it's being positive. And I believe, I personally believe, like feminine energy and positive energy, they kind of go together. Like I'll say this. Typically, a woman who comes across very positive and loving is not going to come across anything but feminine. It, she's not going to be viewed in, in, in the opposite way. So to me, positivity, even if you say, I don't know how to be feminine, right? And I got other videos on the feminine stuff and I got more stuff coming, but you should know how to be positive, right? I think you can at least start from there because that will still help you exude the right type of energy and spirit that you need. And again, I have to remind you, this isn't just about how men will receive or perceive you. This is going to be benefit you in all ways. Quick example, I had a client many years ago who was like the head doctor of the hospital or the manager. She basically ran the place. And when she came to me, she was top, discouraged with men, ready to give up. Um, there's a lot more to the story, but the bottom line is she carried a lot of masculine energy. Okay, And the people that worked did not like her. And we worked on that. We did some healing. We got her to tap into her feminine energy, her positive energy. And literally, she went from people not liking her at work to people always being willing to help her, you know, being more accommodating, being more pleasant and friendly. Like, it completely changed her work environment for her. Then it also turned into her meeting a man. And now I can say proudly she is married to a man that she met in that process, okay? It works. It works. It has an amazing impact. But again, it's not just about the man. It's about you, your quality of life, and how much better you will feel when you start to tap into and exude that more positive, loving, feminine energy more consistently in your life. All right, so before I get to the next one, real quick, I want you to join my text club today. It's a special little membership group I have. It's only $5 a month, and it's going to give you inspirational messages and videos for me and bonus content, and you're really going to enjoy it and find it beneficial. It's going to help pour into you mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and part of the proceeds are going to go to my Healing Generations Foundation, my nonprofit organization that aims to provide low-cost and free therapy coaching, uh, and, and many other services to all. It's, I, I, I'm striving to make a lot of great big moves with this foundation. So uh, definitely by joining the text club, you'll be helping the nonprofit. So go click the link below in the description or in the comment section and make sure you join today. So now moving on to another thing that men notice first in a woman and take a deep breath. I don't want some of y'all to get sensitive, but the next thing is a woman's body, okay? Now listen, I'm not saying that's what they should be focused on, but that's what it is. Like men are going to look at a woman's body and men are going to, uh, it's going to impact their selection process of who they entertain. Now, for you as a woman, what I first want to say, and I've been saying it with the other points, it always starts with what are you happy with? Because the reality is that different men like different things. I do think if we're being real, there's, there's going to be certain things that's more universally liked than others, right? Being fit is typically more universally liked, but different men like different things. That's just the reality of it. And so rather than trying to get you to fit a certain mold, right? I always want to encourage you to, one, it's about do you like what you see in the mirror? How good are you feeling about yourself? And then two, making sure you're putting yourself in a healthy place, all right? Whatever that is. Because going in any different direction, whether that's thicker, skinnier, whatever, uh, whether that's surgeries, whatever, like it, anything that's for certain people can cause a problem. Too much of anything can be a problem, right? So you want to be careful and make sure you are staying in a healthy place and what I like to call finding your happy place. That place of, I feel good, 
with how I look. I feel good with how I feel. And I like the results I get from it. Okay? Because if, if you're like, well, I'm comfortable this way, but you're not getting no results this way, then it's like, is that really your happy place? Are you really good there? Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably not for being honest. So it's like, all right, maybe we might make a little tweak here and there to kind of help bring forth better results. But again, you don't have to go to any extreme. It's just finding that place that works for you. But I, I will say, I feel the need to say this again. And I know some of y'all are like, well, we don't care. <laughs> but oh, the, the, a woman's body can be, in some for some men, even more impactful than how she looks in the face. I'm just going to be real with y'all. Again, I'm not saying that's the way it should be. I'm just explaining this to y'all that this is what the reality is for some men. And I do think that it's one of the things that we have, like we can't really control how we were born and what we look like with facial features and stuff like that outside of the, the surgeries of today. But the one thing we have a little more power over, a lot more power over, is our, the physicality and, and how we look in our body. And I, and I think that we should make sure we're pouring into ourselves in that healthy, positive way. All right. So I always want to encourage that, that healthy living. I always want to encourage you to strive for what's best for you. Right. But understand that, yes, it does play a role. It does. It is something that men notice very quickly and evaluate, so to speak. And though we all know that through time, things will change naturally with everybody. It still it doesn't mean it's going to be ignored initially. That's just the reality of it. So it's like, okay, yeah, it might change 10 years from now, but still want it to be in the vicinity of what we like currently, you know? And I think that's a case can be made as for most people, if not pretty much all people. So just another one of those things I had to put on the list because it's what is the reality of men. All right, so few more that we got on this list of things that men notice first in a woman. And one of those things, believe it or not, is your skin. All right. And I will say, I, I, I haven't done enough research to say, like, I'm confident that this is what most men notice or are really paying attention to. I don't know how, I can't say with certainty how much the quality of a woman's skin is really going to impact uh, a man's uh, attraction to her and things of that nature, but it can. It definitely can, and it's definitely something that is a representation of self. Now, I think that the one of the other big reasons why I wanted to add skin to this list, because I do, you know, if you've been watching my other videos, you know I'm very much into healthy living. And I think a lot of people don't realize how what you put in your body is affecting your skin more than anything. Like everyone's always asking for what's the person with good skin, uh, what's their skin routine, right? And that's cool. I'm not saying don't do your skin routine and all that kind of stuff. Make it happen. But make sure you're taking care of yourself internally too. And the type of foods that we eat and the things that we're drinking, all these different things, can be, it, 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 it's basically you fighting with one hand tied behind your back because you are topically, the things you're putting on the surface are helpful, but the real battle is from within. And curing some of those things, removing some of the inflammation that's being caused by foods that don't agree with your body can go a long way to improving your skin and improving your skin can have an impact on your overall health because it's kind of all connected together. So now one thing I want to throw out there, I'm not a doctor, but it's something that I believe in and, and I am passionate about is eating for your blood type. Okay. Just research it. Just look into it. The, the basic premise of it is based off your blood type, there are certain foods that agree with your body and do not agree with your body. And those things, when you, when you eat the things that don't agree with it, can cause a lot of problems. And sometimes it's foods that you think are healthy, and in general they are, but they're not healthy for you. So quick example, if I eat banana, it will mess me up, okay? 
Banana does not sit well with me. I get bloated. It causes problems. It's causing inflammation. If I eat too much tomato, I can literally start having back problems. Inflammation in my lower back because I ate too much tomato. Like, and these are, again, generally accepted as healthy foods. So you may not realize what is causing a problem. And I believe that, yes, there is truth or at least some level of truth to the blood type eating. So look into it because those things can help you with your skin. Of course, staying hydrated is going to be very, is very important. All right. That's going to be helpful for your skin. But here's another thing that's very important that I have to talk to you about. Stress. All right. A lot of y'all are carrying way too much stress. And I'm going to hone in on emotional stress. You ever come across someone, it could be a very young individual, and they look like they don't live 10 times over already. Like their face looks rough. They look like they've been through it, right? And what happens to a lot of individuals, young or older, is that when you start to go through things, and we naturally all have been through something, but you're suppressing it, right? You're not releasing these things. You start to create emotional stress in the body. And that's essentially like trapped energy in your body that needs to get out. And what happens is that stress starts to take a toll on you. And it starts to age you and it starts to activate diseases and ailments and issues and pains and all these different things. And if we would just learn to release, because you don't heal by suppressing, you heal by releasing, you will start to feel better, look better, right? And experience better for it. And so it's important to understand we have to manage our stress as best as possible. So we got to manage that emotional stress, heal, release things. We got to manage that environmental stress. What are the things around you that's causing a problem? I always say, like, when you go home, look at your home and say, does this home pour positivity into me or negativity? I don't want to get too deep into this, but I'm just going to say real quick, quick story. Once upon a time, I was staying at a, at a place where the room I stayed in was depressing, okay? <laughs> and I didn't realize, like, I was depressed while I was there, not realizing I'm in this very depressing room. The, the, it was very gray. It was very gloomy. There was no windows. Like, that was a problem. And simply changing my environment helped. And for some people, it might be adding a plant in your house can make a difference. It could be finding ways to bring in more sunlight. It could be adding a painting or picture, color, candle, whatever. There's so many little different tweaks you can make that can create a more peaceful, positive environment at the home that now reduces and removes more of a stressful environment from you. And that will help you with not aging so fast and help your skin look more vibrant. But again, I'm not a doctor. Do your research. Look into it. But yes, skin is one of those things that some men are going to notice in you first. All right. So these next two, I'm going to kind of combine because the first one is, is just quick and simple. Uh, but then the next one after that is a little more... Um, some of y'all might be sensitive to it. But anyways, the, the, first, the next thing that men notice in a woman first is her eyes, right? And to me, I don't know, I, I don't want to say there's nothing you can do about it because I'm sure how a woman does her makeup could affect her eyes and how they look and things like that. But in general, your eyes are your eyes. Um, it's not nothing for you to be stressing about to me. It's just something that they do notice. And I do think in the way that you can control it is understanding that your eyes are powerful in the sense of what it can communicate to a man, how it can make a man feel, the way that you look at him, the way that you make eye contact with him. Those things are very powerful in expressing interest or drawing someone into you, seducing. I'm not saying you need to be out there seducing anyone while you're dating, but I'm just saying it can do it. All right. And so... I think making sure you're tapping into those abilities and understanding those powers is a good thing. It's a good thing because we talked about in a previous video about how to flirt with a man, how 
looking, making eye contact and holding that eye contact is a very great way to express that you have interest. Because a lot of women, they look, they glance, they move away. And it's like, ah, he's not really sure what, what that means. But when you look and you hold that look for like three seconds, well, that's a lot more powerful. So that's the something to be aware of and to consider. And it is something that men, many men will notice first in you. Now, the one that women may be more sensitive to is a woman's hair. All right. Now, I ain't crazy, so I ain't going to sit here and tell you how do you to wear your hair, because right? I don't need y'all trying to come at me or attack me going at your hair. And, and the reality is different people like different things. Now, I'm going to tell you, me personally, I'm horrible when it comes to even recognizing fake hair, real hair, wig, weave. I don't know. To me, if it looks good on you, I'm happy. You feel good in it, I'm happy. That's all I care about. So I'm not one of those guys that, you know, I just want you to feel good and look good. That's it. But, of course, there are other men out there who have their preferences. Some may prefer natural. Some may want a long, even if it's a weave. Some may want this. Some may care about the color, all this different stuff. So it does play into it. Now, I will say this, and I say this respectfully and with love. I do think... So let me say this. I've seen some women go with a certain kind of hairstyle. And my problem isn't the hairstyle. My problem is how it looks on you, right? Or how maybe you don't actually put any effort in making it look good with this style. And to me, again, I personally just want to see a woman who feels good in how she's wearing her hair and, and, and is looking good in it and all this type of stuff. But I do think that like, that's something just to be mindful of. And, and I say that even to men. Like, when I see men who struggle to get attention or get dates, and for some of them, it's like, if you just got a better haircut, it, it would be a game changer. And I think for some women, it's like just finding that style that really works for you, that really maybe brings out your beauty even more, like, that can be a game changer. Like, have y'all ever seen those shows where women go... And they get a whole makeover and they come in looking one way. And when they come out, it's damn near a whole new person, right? And you're like, this is amazing. And sometimes it's just the changing of their hairstyle. It just had such a profound effect, right? And so I think, yeah, it's something to, to be aware of. But again, not something to stress over. But if you can, put some effort into it. Be mindful of it. But again, most importantly, do it so that you can feel good. Because when you get up in the, in the morning and you look at yourself in the mirror and you like how you look, man, that has a real positive effect on the rest of your day. You know? And, and that's what I want you guys to experience. But definitely it is one of those things that men will notice in a woman. Thank you for watching this video. I pray it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on five things about men every woman needs to know. He can literally be in a relationship Say I don't want to get married to his partner. Let's say after a year, she finally gets fed up, they break up, and six months later, he's engaged to some other woman.